Hey guys, what's up? It's Isaac, and today we're going to be talking about the issue of abortion, uh, what the biblical stance is on it. Uh, but first, I just want to give a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you for supporting me and this ministry um, on Patreon. If you want to help support this ministry monthly, uh, head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple. Help support me, what I do. I appreciate it. Link in description. Now on to the video. So, by me even making this video, it's going to stir up a lot of emotion in a lot of people's minds um, for or against. It's a very sensitive topic, and it's very controversial in a sense, but I don't think it should be. Even me, as a 20-year-old guy, speaking in on this issue to some people, that might seem very wrong or that shouldn't happen. Um, you know, a lot of people hold the opinion that men can't speak up on the issue of abortion, which honestly I think is really sad. And and it silences a lot of uh, important discussion and debate that needs to happen around this issue. So that's why I'm going to speak up today and really dig into some of the nitty gritty. I can't answer every question or dig into every different facet of this issue. We're going to have to do more videos on this topic in the future, but I think it's important that we begin this conversation. So whether you agree with my take on abortion or the Bible's uh, stance on abortion. I just encourage you to really see where our hearts are coming at. We're not coming at this issue with a, with some anger in our heart towards people that want to have abortions or anything like that, but what we're coming at it is with this idea of love and wanting to love the people, wanting to love children, and wanting to love what God loves. So in order to find out is abortion wrong, we need some sort of sense of morality. From a secular worldview, uh, morality is really plucked out of the individual. Um, this idea that within each of us is a subjective morality that we all can find for ourselves. I might think this is wrong and you might think that's right. It's a subjective thing. There's no objective standard of morality, this idea of right and wrong. But when we look at the Bible, we actually realize, wait, God is actually the standard of morality. God has not only given us his law, but his law is actually a ref reflection of his character. So he has given us that objective morality, that, that um, unchanging stance of right and wrong that we can look at. And I think that's where we need to begin, because if we're just going to argue, I think this, you think that, I think this, you think that, we're not going to make up any ground. We need to get to something where we can actually find a solid sense of morality and really decipher this topic based on that. So the Bible is where we get that solid sense, that objective sense of morality. And so we can head on over to Psalm 139, uh, verse 13 to 16. For you created me in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know well of that. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. That first verse is very powerful. This idea of God knitting us in our mother's womb. God knew us from the time of conception. He put worth on our life. We are valuable to God. We are not a clump of tissue. No, in fact, we are his creation. God created us special and unique from our mother. We're not the same Thing. And one of the key arguments, and we'll be going over some of these arguments of abortion, is this idea that it's my body, I can do what I want with my body, and that's why there's so much hostility to men speaking up on this issue, because it seems like to many people that um, when men, men are telling women what they need to do with their body. But the what we need to understand is actually, this is not women's body, this is something distinct, this is something separate that God has created. And we need to understand, look, hey, we can look at the scientific proof and understanding that, hey, look, this child has different DNA than its mother. Often it has a different blood type than its mother. This is not the same as her mother. And we, what we can understand is actually as time goes on and science has been able to have the baby outside the mother's womb for a longer and longer time, that this is a distinct valuable person that we ought to be loving and regard as something valuable that is worth protecting. Another argument is this idea that it depends 
on me. It depends on the mother for life, therefore the mother has the right to, you know, get rid of it if that's what she wants, if that's what's most convenient for her situation. Depending on someone is not a license to do away with that person. Look, three-year-olds depend on their mothers to help them survive. Three-year-olds can't survive on their own. They need help. The elderly person who is in hospital, who needs help getting their medication, who needs help going to the bathroom, those people will not survive without help. They depend on someone. So depending, the fact that somebody depends on you for life, in a sense, is not a justification or your right to take that person's life away. Another argument is that it will have a bad life. Maybe the mother's not in such a great financial situation or or whatever. There's just a lot of, you know, tough stuff around that pregnancy. And just th this idea that, look, the baby's not going to have a good life. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be really hard for the baby. Um, but actually, something that I point out in my pro-life film, which you can watch, link in description, the decision between a hard life and no life is an easy answer for the child in the womb. And that's not even considering the fact that even though we may see this as a good decision, maybe we may see this as something compassionate done for the child, we don't have the right to make that decision. We don't have the right to take that life away. According to God's biblical standard, this idea in, in the Ten Commandments, this commandment that says, thou shalt not murder, we don't have the right to take somebody's life away just because we think it may be more compassionate. According to our own subjective standard of morality, we got to be looking to God's standard. Another situation people will point to is um, children conceived in incest or rape. And I think this is something where Christians shouldn't, um, you know, back up on. I think this is an area where we're really called to speak into this issue of abortion in regard to incest and rape because my heart, and I think the Bible, and I know the Bible's uh, speaking on this issue is this idea of biblical justice and understanding that the person, the perpetrator in this situation, that man who, who took advantage, who abused, that person should be the one under um, punishment, under judgment, not the child, not the child. Because if we punish the child for the crimes of the father, that's not biblical justice. That's, that's terrible. And we can't forget the woman in this situation. I think it's important to realize that even though there may be a temptation to say, look, you know what, if this woman keeps this baby, she's going to be traumatized because of that past abuse that happens. But we're really neglecting the fact that abortion is not does not leave you with a clean sheet, right? Abortion has tremendous um, power of having tremendous guilt over this woman her entire life. And I don't want that. But we also need to be understanding, and this is when I want to bring in a quote here from Matt Chandler. We must not save abortion, this is murder, without saying to a pregnant woman, we will serve you. If you're doing the former without the latter, we aren't truly understanding the gospel. And I totally agree with that. Because even in these difficult situations, we can say, yes, that is murder. But as Christians, we ought to be saying, hey, look, we don't want to just leave you in this state of trouble where you're at. We want to serve you. Look, we believe God created this life. We believe that this life is worth keeping and is valuable. But we also believe that your life is valuable and we want to serve you. We want to love you. You. you see, it can be easy, especially for me even, to be looking at this issue and say, hey, look, yeah, this is a life. Yeah, we, we need to be calling this what it is. It is murder and just leave it at that. But we, what we ought to be going is, is going further than just merely our words and moving it into our actions. That's what we're, what we're called to do as Christians. And you have to understand where my heart is coming at. I think it can be easy to look at, you know, somebody like me who's talking about this issue and say, oh, look, that guy's just hateful. That guy just, you know, wants to suppress women. Hey, that guy, you know, that guy's just terrible. Um, and But I, I think it can be easy to look at a lot of people that are pro-life that way. But just kind of understand where our heart's at. Look, we see God creating each one of us as special and unique and worthy of love and worthy of care. And I think this is an issue where we got to be speaking into this. And that's why we are, because we love the women and we love the children. This is an outflowing of our love for people. And I think if, if we ever speak out of anger or hate or pride, and if you've ever experienced that in your own life, somebody speaking at you with, with that kind of temperament, I'm sorry. But I also want to say, look, 
God has called us to speak the truth in love. And if you have had an abortion, I just want to let you know that God has offered forgiveness for your sin because we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And God's forgiveness, God's sacrifice on the cross, the fact that he sent Jesus to live a perfect life, a life that we could not live, to die on the cross, a death we deserve to die, and rose again on the third day, he can now forgive your crime. He can now forgive your sin. He can forgive my sin because he has made that sacrificial act, because he has brought us close to his side, he has justified us, and now given us a new identity. So there doesn't need to be any more guilt or shame based on what we've done in the past because God has taken that on himself. So is abortion murder? Yes, it is. It's the murder of a child. And what we need to be doing is speaking into this issue, loving the babies, loving the pregnant mothers, speaking into this issue and acting on our love. And I think the fact that we have been given so much mercy and grace by God that he has saved us, that should be our outflowing of that should be love others and really point people to the redemption and forgiveness that can be found in the gospel. If you want to go check out my pro-life short film, you can do that. It's link in description. I mentioned it earlier. It's about 10 minutes and I think you'll be moved by it and it kind of digs into a little more of the issues that I covered uh, today. You can leave a comment down below with your thoughts and uh, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel because I'm making new videos all the time, Mondays and Thursdays. You can also pick up my new book, A Letter to My Father, What Your Son Wants to Tell You But Doesn't. Uh, link in description. It tells more about my story and really verbalizes the thing, a lot of the things that young men don't say. So I encourage you to check out this book, uh, pick it up, link in description. Well guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you later.